Hello everyone, welcome back to Understanding Mathematics, and today we're going to be going over infinite limits or limits to infinity. Now hopefully at this point you already have a pretty good understanding of finite limits, because if you're not so sure about finite limits, these are probably going to be even harder for you than they would be anyway. So let's go ahead and just jump right into this. Now the first thing I'm going to say is, unlike finite limits, these limits always exist. And the reason for that is the limit is either going to infinity or negative infinity. So you're not going to have a, oh, do the left hand and right hand limits agree type thing. It's, it's only from the left or from the right. So the limit will always exist. Now, when you're doing these problems, you usually have two types of problems. You'll have an algebraic problem and a graphic problem. Um, the graphic one is really easy. All you do is look at a graph and see, oh, what's this approaching? Um, and it's especially easy if it's like a, if it's a, function like e to the x that you've memorized its behavior and you can say oh I know what this is just you know you don't even have to look at the graph that's how good you are with it. I did already hopefully you get that good at it and hopefully this video helps you get there because the second type of problem I'm going to be going over is familiar familiarizing you guys with with those functions natural log e to the x e to the negative x even but this first one's more algebraic and I in my opinion these are a little bit harder if you haven't seen them before so we're going to go ahead and break this one down. So, the limit as this polynomial approaches infinity. How do we go ahead and attack this? Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you, it's going to, if there's one takeaway from this video, it's this. Um, if, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then it approaches infinity. So let's go ahead and write that down. If num is greater than denominator, then it approaches infinity. But if the denominator is bigger, and sometimes, like if you get really good at these problems, you'll be able to look at it right away and say, oh yeah, I know, that's going to zero, or that's going to infinity. Just by looking at it, you just get that good at it. But we're going to go ahead and assume that we're not that good at it yet. Um, and so if denominator is greater than numerator, then we approach zero. Okay, so, and this is of course for positive infinity. If it's for negative infinity, if we're approaching negative infinity, then this infinity over here would be negative, and if the denominator is bigger, it's still zero. That doesn't change. Anyway, let's get to solving this problem. So how do you approach this? How do you know what's bigger? How do you know what's smaller? So since we're comparing the denominator and numerator, we can just kind of look at them separately. So let's just isolate our numerator here. Take a look at it. Now, if you've never done this before, you don't know what the first step is. And the first step is just to look at it and think, what is the exponent of highest order? What what component of this polynomial is the largest? Basically, that's all you ask yourself. x cubed, 4x squared, 3x, or 5? Well, hopefully you know that it's x cubed. And actually, believe it or not, at this point, you can just ignore the other polynomials. And then what's the biggest on the bottom? Well, there's only one thing, 2 to the x. Um, and just, just so you know, because I want you guys to be prepared for any scenario, let's say you had 2x plus something else at the bottom. Usually, almost always, the, the 2 to the x is larger. If the x is in the exponent, that means the infinity is going to get plugged into that x. And the number is going to grow by a scale of infinity. So we're going to have a huge number here, just, just so you have some reference. Okay, so now we have the two, the two numbers that we're going to go with. So let's rewrite our problem. Limit as x approaches infinity. And now it's simplified to x cubed over 2 to the x. Okay, now... Since we're doing a limit problem, you plug in the limit. Very simple. Limit. Actually, sorry. We don't need to write limit anymore if we're plugging it in. So we would just get infinity cubed over 2 to infinity. And so now, this is when you ask yourself this question up here. What's bigger, 
Is numerator bigger or is denominator bigger? And the truth is, with these questions, you really you really have no way of knowing, right? If you've never dealt with infinity before, it's kind of hard to, to visualize this, to think, okay, well, is infinity cubed bigger? That, that seems pretty big, but 2 to the infinity also seems pretty big. And I just don't know which one's the biggest. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, and you take this information and you can apply it to any problem that you do ever with infinite limits, and it'll work. Infinity and the exponent will always be bigger than infinity and the base. So because we have infinity here and infinity in the base, we know that the infinity and the exponent is bigger. It's just, you know, you really didn't have any chance of knowing that, but now you know it, and, and that's just how you do it. The infinity and the exponent is bigger. So what does that mean? Well, that means that our denominator is bigger than the numerator. So, what does the limit approach? If the denominator is greater than the numerator, it looks like it approaches zero. So, the limit is zero. Okay. Well, that's great. That's that doesn't seem too bad at all. Let's let's say you know this is like the first question you're doing on the homework assignment. You're not so confident about it. How can we double check? You guessed it. Graph. So this is the graph of x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 5 all over 2 to the x. And it's, you know, this parabolic looking shape and it kind of does some crazy bends. But all we need to do is look at it as it gets bigger. We could ignore all these things in the middle and just see what it behaves as x gets larger. And it looks like it's just flatlining at about x equals... 20. It just kind of stays on that on that zero. So yeah, it looks like it's staying on zero. So so the simple answer is is what we got x equals zero and or y equals zero. I mean, and that's correct. So that's a good way to fact check and check your work like that. And so that's about half of the problems they can ask you with limits to infinity. Just polynomial. You look at the biggest one, the two biggest, and then you compare them. But sometimes they're going to throw in functions. You're going to get e to the x, e to the negative x, natural log, or or log base 10. But you only really have to know one because they behave almost the same. And you need to be prepared to, to know how these behave. What does e to the x do as x gets huge? What does e to the x do as x gets tiny? You have to know because this stuff never goes away. You'll get asked these type of questions years after you took limits and calculus. Years after. You're just going to have to know it. And so the best way to, to know it, it's not using algebra. It's using a graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at a graph, e to the x, and see how it behaves. And as soon as you look at the graph, it, it gets so simple, guys, I, I promise. So what does e to the x do as x gets huge? Well, it skyrockets. That's easy. As x goes to infinity, e to the x goes to infinity. That's easy. Perfect. What about as x gets smaller, negative? Well, it's pretty easy to see that it's just zero. So hopefully you can commit this to memory. e to the x, as x approaches infinity, the values get larger and approaches infinity. As it approaches negative infinity, the values go to zero. Pretty easy, simple enough. Let's try another one. What's another one that you might see a lot of on tests? e to the x. Now, hopefully you memorize these because you might not have to, you might not be able to use a calculator on the exam. If you do, if you are allowed a calculator, then this is going to be really simple. It's only if it's a graphing calculator, of course. If you don't have a graphing calculator, then you're going to have to memorize. But if you have a graphing calculator and you're allowed to use it, this gets really easy. And so e to the negative x is just a reflection of e to the x over the y-axis. So what happens is, what happens to e to the negative x is x gets huge. Well, it just approaches zero. It's just another flat line. But what about when it approaches negative infinity? Well, it skyrockets. It goes to infinity. So. And now, no, it's an important distinction to make because this was kind of confusing for me when I was when I was learning limits. Just because it's on the negative x quadrant, that doesn't mean it's negative infinity. As long as it's over 
the x-axis. We're looking at the y values here, not the x values. When, we, when you do the answer of a limit, you look at the y values. And so since it doesn't matter if it's on the left side of the y-axis or the right side, as long as it's above that x-axis, we have a positive infinity. So as the limit as x approaches negative infinity, e to the negative x, it approaches positive infinity. Very important to know. Okay, so hopefully that's another one that you can get to memory. The last one I'll show you is natural log. It's important to know that this one does have an asymptote at zero. And so since it, since it has an asymptote, well, what does it approach? Obviously, negative infinity. Why? Because it keeps going straight down. What's the y value? Because the x value is zero. That doesn't mean the y value is zero. The y value, it keeps on going down forever, so it's negative infinity. So as natural log approaches zero, you'll have negative infinity. Because natural log of x can't approach negative infinity because it has an asymptote at zero. So that's just that's a good bit of information to know. It's important to know the asymptotes of your functions because if you know the asymptotes, the limits get a lot easier. And what happens is natural log approaches infinity. This one might be a little bit tougher to see because the line gets so so stale, it doesn't move very much. It, it almost looks like a flat line. But you can look here, look at the the y equals five line, and it's getting closer and closer and closer to it. Oh, is it approaching y equals five? Oh, look, it just passed it. And so let's keep going a little bit more just to see. Looks like it keeps on growing. And so the limit of natural log to positive infinity is actually infinity. It keeps going up. Even though it's going to take forever, forever for it to get a huge value, it keeps going up forever. And so that'll wrap up this video. I hope you guys gained some more understanding of mathematics. Good luck on all your exams. See you next time.